Hello everyone, Michael Shamblum here, and in this new tutorial, I'm going to show you start to finish how I process my landscape photography using Adobe Lightroom. And if you can see here, I've got this seascape photograph that we're going to be working on, and I really lucked out <laughs> with the conditions here. This is shot in San Francisco, California, with the Sony A1 camera and the Nikon 14-24. And I've purposely underexposed this image by quite a bit. I've underexposed by about a stop, knowing that I could take the exposure up a bit, uh, retain all these highlight details in here. And uh, let's go ahead and just start from the top here. So we've got our profile, which there's some different Adobe profiles here. I, I think auto, it just starts on color, which is usually pretty good. I think it'll work pretty good for this photograph. Standard also works pretty good if you want a little bit more subtlety. And then landscape, which does look good if you're trying to get punchy colors, uh, but unfortunately is not going to work at all for this image because the colors were already so crazy. I think we're just going to work with the standard color profile here. So I'm going to go ahead and brighten up the exposure a bit. And the stop might be a little high. I love what it's doing to the foreground. You can see we get that, that wonderful brightness in the foreground water flow. A little bright on the sky though, so I think I'm going to go halfway here. About half a stop. What I'm going to want to do is darken the sky and brighten the foreground, but I'm going to do that selectively. So I'm not going to do it through the global adjustments here. All right, so now that we have a good sense of the exposure here, I think I'm going to do a bit of a crop. I think it would be nice to get just a bit closer to our our background subject there, the, the uh, wonderful rocks in the background. So I'm just going to use this crop tool up here, crop in a bit. You can, of course, lock on the aspect ratio or change the aspect ratio if you want an 8x10 or something like that. I'm going to keep it to the standard 2x3 for this image, and I'm also going to do a slight rotation on the horizon. I usually do it by just looking at the sides here, but if you're a little worried, you can also use this angle tool. And we just go from one side to the other. Make sure we're right on the horizon. Perfect. And we're just going to go through the rest of the sliders here. Take down the highlights a bit. Bring up the shadows. Bring up the blacks slightly. And I like to also just play around with the sliders and move them all the way just to see what the effect will do. I'm not actually going to apply 100% clarity, but it is nice to just see what that effect will do to the photograph. So bringing up the clarity, I like what it's doing a little bit in the clouds and a little bit in the water, but uh, we're going to have to do that selectively. And same with the dehaze. Actually, a little bit of dehaze could work really well for this image. I like the blue that it's bringing into the sky. So I'm going to very subtly use the dehaze here. Vibrance and saturation. Personally, I don't use too much of the saturation slider. That's just going to affect all of the colors in your photograph. Vibrance is a little bit more selective. It tries to analyze the colors that aren't already oversaturated and sort of just brings up the more muted tones. So I tend to use vibrancy a lot more than saturation. And I'm going to bring the vibrance up here. Not too much though, because we already have so much saturation in those clouds. And then if you want to see a before and after, just type or uh, click the backslash key. You have your tonal curve here, which is quite nice to use. Um, if you want to increase contrast in your photograph, you can do that by increasing the steepness of this curve. You would want to take one point right here on the right side, bring that up slightly, and take a point on the left, bring that down, and vice versa. We could also decrease the contrast if we make the curve a little less steep by bringing down the highlights and bringing up the shadows. I think for this photograph, I'm going to leave everything alone for the tonal curve. We've kind of done enough here with the sliders, and we're going to need to do more uh, using the brush tool and gradients. 
The HSL sliders are one of my favorite tools and it allows us to adjust and control each color individually. We can adjust the hue of each color, the saturation of each color, and the luminance of each color. Be very careful with the luminance because sometimes that will uh, add some weird compression to your photograph. Um, but I think this will work perfect for desaturating the <laughs> reddish orange tones in the photograph just a little bit. So I'm gonna take this eyedropper here. I'm gonna select the color that I wanna adjust right about here. You can see we can mute that color slightly and it's not gonna adjust any of the other colors in the photograph. And then we can actually go up to maybe the blue and we can increase the saturation of the blue. So it's a great way of isolating different colors in your photograph. We may adjust the white balance after we do a few more edits. I find that it's a little easier to adjust the white balance after you've already done a bit of contrast adjustments uh, because those contrast adjustments really do, they, they sort of influence the colors a bit. Color grading, we're not gonna use this for this photograph, but if you did wanna add a bit of color to the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows individually, you could do that using this panel. Detail, I am gonna sharpen my photograph. I'm gonna zoom in here. I like to use a mount. I find that it's radius really only is beneficial for for photography that's a little out of focus or not out of focus, but like when you have a lens that's a little soft, I find that increasing the radius helps to sharpen that a bit, but I, I don't find using it for tack sharp images is that helpful. And we could use a bit of noise reduction, although there's really not any noise in this photograph. Just be careful if you're using the noise reduction. If you do have a noisy image, don't go too far with this slider. You can see the further I go, it just kind of creates a cartoony look to the image. It starts making the image look completely like a painting because you've just lost too much detail. So really, I mean, if we're talking about the, the noise reduction slider, I probably wouldn't go past, you know, 40 for your noise reduction, unless you have a, <laughs> unless you have a really noisy, noisy image. And one of the most important panels here is your lens corrections. I always apply lens corrections to every single photograph and uh, right here we can remove the chromatic aberration which is those little edge fringing on uh, areas of tonal contrast. You can see it slight magenta cyan in some photographs. It looks like we're not getting much here but it's really just one click. You just click this button and it removes it and then you don't have to worry about it later on. Now we could do the profile corrections for this image, which we should do. Unfortunately for me, <laughs> since I'm using a manual lens, I'll need to go through, select the Nikon lens that I was using. And uh, this is a very anecdotal thing because you probably won't have to go through that same process because your lens will be connected to the camera. But if you are adapting lenses, you'll have to do it manually. The transform tool is great when you're working with cityscapes and you need to correct vertical lines or correct other bits of distortion. Um, for this seascape photo, there's really no point in using any of these tools. But of course, um, if we did have some trees in here, we might, you know, adjust the vertical position so that we could straighten out those trees if we're using a wide angle lens. And then effects. We've got our vignetting and we've got our grain. If you like a little bit of grain, you can throw some in. Personally, I wouldn't use the vignette tool here. Vignettes are so much easier to create using the selective brushing and using the gradients. So I really don't see a need of using the post crop vignette. It gives you a lot less control. Um, now we had talked a little bit about white balance. I, I think the white balance here still is, <laughs> I mean, I, I wouldn't want to adjust it too much. I, I'm thinking maybe just a, a hint of blue into the photograph could be nice. And the way I like to adjust the white balance is I do it using the number on the right side instead of moving um, the little slider tab because I find it's a lot more controlled. So I'll click on the number here and I'll actually use my keyboard using the up and down arrows to adjust the colors very subtly. So you can see just moving it one notch because even just one or two notches, you can start to see those color differences, and I want to be very subtle with it. Um, so there we go. We've introduced just a little bit more blue 
into the photograph and now I'm gonna take down the tint a bit. And right now I'm bringing in some green into the photograph. We have our tools on the top, uh, which we already adjusted the crop. I have seen now that I've brightened up the water, I was getting some water spots on the lens, which if you shoot seascapes and you're in the water, this is bound to happen. Um, I find that almost every single seascape that I shoot, I always have to clone out one or two of these little water spots. Um, there is a spot removal brush here in Lightroom. Personally, I don't find it to be as good as the one in Photoshop, unfortunately, but um, you know, it'll do the trick. We can remove these water spots here by sampling from another area. You can adjust the feather, the opacity. All right, that'll work for now. And let's go ahead and move to our masking tools. So there's a uh, new masking in, in Lightroom 2022. Uh, um, I think I'm gonna start with a radial gradient here. You can see this little box pops up. That'll be our masking tool. And I'm gonna make a big soft mask here. Put the feather to about 50. I'm gonna take the exposure down here and I'm gonna invert it so that what's happening is on the outside of the circle. And really I'm trying to darken the sky here. I'm trying to do a nice soft gradient for the sky. But there's a problem. I do like what it's doing to the sky. I don't want it to do this adjustment to the foreground. Now, what I do like about the new masking system in Lightroom is you can subtract or add to the mask very easily. Um, so we're gonna tap on this little thumbnail of our radial mask. I'm gonna click the minus button for subtract. And I'm gonna take a linear gradient tool here. Start from the bottom up. And now what we've done is we've actually removed the radial mask from the bottom of the image. So now we've got this kind of nice circular uh, gradient that's only affecting the top of the sky. And then we can make a new linear gradient, go from the bottom, and I'm going to bring up the contrast and the exposure on the water. And I'm also gonna bring in some of the clarity here, a bit of the white slider to really give it some pop. And now one of the new tools in this masking section is Select Sky, which does a really good job. If we click on the button, it's gonna analyze and detect the sky and make a mask for us. But let me show you a problem that this creates and a way of fixing it. So if we just go ahead and take from this adjustment, this sky adjustment, and just take down the exposure, you know, usually we do want to darken the sky a bit more than the raw file. The problem with this is since it does select the entirety of the sky, it creates this really unnatural edge between the mask and the actual foreground or, or the horizon. Um, so what I find is best is if you are gonna use the select sky button, you wanna feather it. We can do that by using a subtraction with the brush tool or with a linear gradient. It just has to be some sort of fade from the selection that they've made and the foreground. So again, we're gonna use that linear gradient, go from the foreground, and just feather that adjustment. And you can see it does a pretty good job. We've made that nice feather, so the mask is going around these rocks, which is nice if, you know, if you've got things sticking out of the out of the horizon, you've got mountains, you've got trees. This is a perfect tool. Again, just be careful with the selection that it creates. Um, for this one, I'm going to increase the clarity again. Maybe a bit of the dehaze. I just want to pop the top of the sky a bit, but I don't really like what it's doing to this bottom area. So I'm gonna have to, again, I think I'm gonna take the brush tool here. I 
think I'm just going to remove some of the mask from this bottom area. So a really underrated tool here in Lightroom that I like using quite a bit is actually changing the background. So right now we're set to the medium gray, but watch what happens when we change the background. It completely changes the look of the photograph. So this is something important, and this is something I consider for every single image that I'm working on. If we go to white, suddenly the image looks quite a bit darker. And then if we go to black, now the image looks really bright and a lot less contrasty. So the background, the place that you're choosing to display your image is going to have a massive influence on what the actual photograph is gonna look like. So I will process my image slightly different depending on where it needs to go. This is you know, true if you need to print your photograph or if it's gonna be displayed large on a website or if you're just gonna put it as like an eight by 10 on Instagram. These are you know, totally different situations. So just something to consider. For that, we can right click on the image, create virtual copy. This is gonna create just an iteration of this image. It's not gonna create a new file on your desktop or anything like that. Um, it's only a reference to the metadata of the image. And we could say, okay, this is gonna be the Instagram edit, let's say, and we could do our little eight by 10 crop, add a bit of contrast, some brightness there, and have it be separate from the image that we plan on printing or the image that we plan on you know, using for our website. I'm gonna go back to middle gray here, increase the contrast a bit, increase the brightness a bit as well. I'm gonna go back to our masking and I think I'm gonna brighten up the shadows on this bottom area slightly. All right, I think that looks pretty good. So this is just what I do in Lightroom. I hope this was helpful for you. I'd be curious to know your thoughts. What's one thing that you struggle the most with when it comes to post-processing? What's the thing that, that you always find yourself coming back to that you have issues with? Please let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more. And yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.